thing we have to get a handle on. What are these things? And, and it's very easy for us to believe in these things. But in fact, we don't have to believe in them because they, they have a very, very physical reality. And this is what I would like to um, show you. For this reason, we shall never acquire any real understanding of plant life unless we realize that everything on Earth is only a reflection of what takes place in the cosmos. Now, later, in Lecture 6, I believe, he says, in the same way, when we want to explain a plant, we must bring into question not only the plant, animal, and human life, but the whole universe. For life comes from the whole universe, not only from the Earth. Nature is a unity, and her forces are at work from all sides. He who can uh, keep this in mind, keep his mind open to the manifest working of these forces, will understand her. And so with these two statements, right at the start, he's saying we, the manifest life forms on earth, are a reflection of what's going on externally to us. And he's not saying just the weather, <coughs> he's saying the whole cosmos. He's saying this is the context, that we are a manifest being. And, and so we need to understand that context. And so, when we look out, and we look up from here, we can say we are on an island in New Zealand, but that's on a planet. And this planet exists in a solar system, and the solar system exists within a galaxy, and the galaxy exists within the universe. This is our home. This is our context. All these things. And they are real. This is the point. They are real. And so this is, this says, you are here. <laughs> and, and so this, this is really our local big father being, in fact, this here. And we know that this being the galaxy, that all of these little white dots here are stars. And stars beam force constantly for long periods of time. And that's quite an important point because we are standing here and they say there's as many stars in the sky as grains of sand in the Sahara Desert. And every one of those stars are beaming force at us constantly from all directions. So that, in that very picture, presents that we're living in the middle of a field of force. And if you have a concept of a hologram, that it's basically light from all directions, that's what we are. We are these beings living in the middle of all of this force. Come back to this a bit later, but it's, it's good, you know, I, I've got a, I'm sorry that I have to move along in this story, time's short. Um, but this is a wonderful meditation to have, is the galaxy. And you know, how big is it? A hundred thousand light years. It takes 200 million years for us to go once round in the circle. And the speed of this is 64,000 miles per hour. Now, of course, this is our sun is moving at 64,000 miles per hour. But we're moving around the sun as well at uh, 46,000 miles per hour and we're spinning at a thousand miles per hour. So we are actually moving at something like 115,000 miles per hour at the moment. And, you know, it's worth just looking at these. Now, just from a phenomena, you know, this is the beginning of our Gertian process. What are we seeing here? What is it that you're seeing? Anyone want to say something? Spiral. Okay. The main point, I'll move it along because we don't have much time. It's a flat plane. This is a disc, a flat plane disc. Is that everything that is there? Is really the question. So the question is how does that flat plane get to be there? What are the activities that are taking place? 
And so uh, this is just one more picture. This is a picture of a star, a young star, in um, the constellation of Virgo. And so what we can see here is that through that flat plane, there's this vertical axis that becomes manifest. Now as that uh, spins faster and gets older, we get a bigger differentiation and we start to lose that physical manifestation of the vertical plane. Now what we're not seeing in that picture is that because of movement, because of any particle moving, it forms a polarisation of electromagnetism and creates an electromagnetic field. So this is what we are really living in. That here is our flat galactic plane, but it's this force body of electromagnetism that is actually organising that substance within that form. And lately, you know, on the internet and so on, there's a lot more talk of this form, and these are one of these pictures. But the important thing to acknowledge in these forms is that because of this spinning nature, we actually have these vortexes at the poles that draw this substance into the middle before it's blown out across the horizontal plane. So this becomes a structural form, a real structural form. And because this form is essentially the structure of everything in our universe, from the stars down to the atoms and everything in between, it means we can use this structural form as a pattern to organise everything in the environment. Now, you may uh, see my table downstairs. I meant to bring it up. I have a three-dimensional periodic table of elements down there on that little stand. So I've organised chemistry according to this form. Because it had to fit. That was the point. It had to fit. So um, this is a picture of the Earth. And uh, here we are in the middle. And here's our big vortexes at the poles. And of course, as the solar wind blows past, we get aurora phenomena taking place at these poles. Um, now, within these structures, of course, the electromagnetic fields organise themselves into these onion-like rings. This is Jupiter, a uh, picture by National Geographic. And if we put the sun in the middle of that, we actually have the planets fitting into these different electromagnetic rings. So the planets are running on rails. So don't have any concern that Mars is going to fly out and knock us off something because it's basically sitting on a rail, running around. But what we have to really take out of this picture is that these are shells of electromagnetism. And Rudolf Steiner kept saying that, that we shouldn't really focus just on the planet, but we should focus on the planetary sphere as a being. And so the physics of, of the solar system is that each planet is sitting in one of these shells and the mass of the planet as it moves warps the shell. And so what we have, we'll come to with some other diagrams, but essentially we have star forces moving through these shells. And so it goes boom, 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 boom. Literally, this is what is called the harmony of the spheres the music of the spheres. It's literally star forces moving through these electromagnetic shells that change shape as the planets move. And herein lies the physics of the planning calendar. This is why the plants are being affected as the planets move, because the electromagnetic shells are changing and the star forces that are carrying that are being affected.